Howdy, everyone. Um, we are really past hump week during uh, the Lenten season. We're past halfway there, and today we have a wonderful gospel, and that is the one that features the healing of a man who was born blind and all of the adventures of the town townspeople around him. And like last week, I would really invite you to read the entire gospel. Um, I'm not going to read it for the recording and then uh, simply listen to my message. It is John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. And I hope that Jesus touches you in your heart this week. Blessings and take care. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, today we have the third of four stories that are coming from the book of John. And these are stories that are very personal encounters that he has with individuals. Uh, first was Nicodemus, and then it was the woman at the well. And now Jesus alters the life of a blind man forever. He gives him sight. Uh, I guess it's just another day in the life of our Savior. Uh, but the crazy thing is, I think that the healing is just the beginning of this story, um, it should have been cause for some big, long party in his village where he lived. But instead, it unleashes a nightmare for this poor kid. I am hopeful, I've always been hopeful, that when the dust settled, this young man was still 100% glad for his sight. You know, I've always wondered if he became a follower of Jesus. But at first... All those reactions from the townspeople, boy, it unleashed the dark side of human beings, of village life. One person after another, by way of their reacting to him, is blind, including the man's own parents. Everyone cannot wait to question him, give their opinions, including the spiritual leaders in town, the Pharisees. You know, was this really a healing? Not even sure about that. You know, just like the prodigal son story, did you find yourself relating to certain characters in this story more than others? Did you relate to the blind man or maybe his parents or the Pharisees or the disciples or those ordinary town folk? You may find parts of yourselves in all of them. I think we all ask God's question, God questions. You know, why are some people injured and disabled? And why are others not? And how often do we place blame on people for their circumstances? Well, if they had just done a little more of that, a little more of that, a little less of that, maybe that wouldn't have happened to them. We tend to do that. And often we are so quick to question their experiences in life. And yet Jesus teaches us to leave the judging to God and focus instead on the caring for others. You know, when we are able to do that, we become better and more supportive townspeople, unlike the first people in that story. So who exactly in this story needs to be healed? Who are the ones who are blind? There's a story about a woman who had five children, and after she had those five children, that's when she lost her vision because of an illness. I mean, imagine that after you have five kids. Well, of course, she struggled with her blindness. She had always been so self-sufficient, doing everything by herself. And now she had to ask for help. Now she had to depend on others, which was almost as great an adjustment as the blindness itself. I mean, there were so many limitations that she had. And yet she also realized that she was noticing things around her that she'd never noticed before. So it was kind of this area of growth and excitement for her. And one of the things that she noticed was this young man in her neighborhood who had been born blind. He often crossed at the same intersection. And when she'd had her sight, she never paid any attention to him. But now that she could not see, she spoke to him and eventually became his friend. Close friends, in fact. 
she discovered that he had never had a birthday party ever in his life, even when he was a kid. So I baked him a cake and organized the party, she said. He made a wish and he blew out the candles even though he couldn't see them. And he was delirious with joy. She describes her experience in the most interesting terms. She says, the surprise to me was how great it made me feel. And on many occasions, I've told something to people that really sounds a little cruel, that everyone should experience at least temporary blindness just to see how our vision can give us such hangups, how we judge and we condemn and what that does to all of us. And then something actually happened that was awful to her. There was a sighted person who knew this blind man, and he noticed that he was falling in love with this single mother of five, and he pulled him aside and he said, hey, hmm, you, um, did you know that this woman is, well, really unattractive? I mean, on a scale of one to 10, I'd only give her about a two or a three. I don't know, man. And as a result, he stopped seeing her. I mean, this was the same woman who had given him the birthday party, befriended him, spent a lot of hours with him, who is now rejecting her because of one person's comment about her appearance. And it brought tears to my eyes, the woman said. He had been seeing fine, as far as I could see, but now he was truly blind. And the woman identified at least two kinds of blindness as she saw it, the same as was experienced by that young man healed by Jesus. The woman identified those two kinds where there's blindness of the eyes and there's blindness of the heart. Isn't our time during Lent about uncovering the blindness of our hearts, deepening our relationship with Christ by looking inside, confessing, and asking for forgiveness, and then actually changing, changing our behavior as well. That is exactly how we keep from visiting our sins on that next generation and healing our relationships with others, all those people around us. You know, something that when you really break it down actually does take a little bit of courage to do, and even time, as maybe we restore relationships that were kind of difficult. But our actions help to heal our spiritual blindness, and I think pleases God. Every time that we can restore relationships through understanding, of course, God is pleased. Some of you might have remembered the uh, tragic death of the blues musician. Remember when Stevie Ray Vaughan um, had passed away? It was awful. He was killed in that helicopter crash back in 1990. Well, the person officiating was Dr. Barry Bailey, and he later talked about conducting this very emotional funeral service. And the family had requested that Amazing Grace be sung sometime during the service. So there was a trio arranged to sing that hymn a cappella. The group was made up of none other than Bonnie Raitt, Stevie Wonder, and Jackson Brown. It brought everybody to tears. And it was a very moving service. And when they reached that, song, that line, I once was blind, but now I see, it was Stevie Wonder who sang that phrase, himself a physically blind man. And Dr. Bailey thought at the time he told us the truth. The words to that famous hymn do not refer to physical eyesight, but instead to spiritual insight. I once was blind, and now I see. The man born blind could now see through the eyes of faith in Jesus. He might have been rejected by his parents, neighbors, at least at first, 
but the blind man knew the truth. He knew that Jesus had healed him, and he told the truth to others. May we open our eyes and minds and hearts to hear the witness of people who have been healed by God, to hear them and to see them. And may we continue to share our own experiences of new life and forgiveness through Jesus. Amen.